So obviously, you did not read or listen at least to the Prophet Wasallam's legendary military legacy or the sealed nectar. For lack of better terms, before he's confined to bed rest, he goes out to visit the site of those shuhada who had been buried from Uhud. And he speaks to them. Also pertaining to visiting the cemetery and the graves, it is a known fact, especially as we get into the era of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan, that they would use the cemetery to remind them of the Akhirah. In other words, they would go to the cemetery and they would sit there and speak to the dead as the Prophet ﷺ did. They would say, لاحقون, We are soon going to join you. And this obviously is a virtuous deed. But a lot of people, again, do not know that. The boy, this young boy wants to keep screaming that it is bid'ah to go visit the grave. So there are only two camps. The brothers, brothers, incorporated brothers have processed the information some time back, as a matter of fact, through again the decree of the junta. And being able to provide this report to clarify that even aside from what has been mentioned above, the Prophet Yahya, والسلام, when you look into the Ibn Kathir, Stories of the Prophet, the Prophet Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam, dug himself a grave and sat there and would weep on a constant basis just to stay mindful of the Akhirah. But again, when you have such unfortunate uh, information, because just as the Quranic Revolution Declaration 2021 was that the information in the educational system has been fraudulent for a, a, a long time and still efforts are going on the extent of the falsified information as well as the impact, the extent of the impact of the false information. However, getting back to the topic that if you do not understand the importance of going to the cemetery, the Muslim cemetery, and making du'a there for them, because that is their right that they are prayed for, they are supplicated for. We can go there and we can also recite Qur'an for them. That's what we are supposed to do as Muslimin. To pray for the dead, obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ So obviously, there is no problem there. However, it is not right to be one of two other camps. One criticizing whoever so goes to the grave because you do believe that visiting the grave in any form is bid'ah. This is wrong, number one. Number two, it is not correct to go to the grave and make dua there as if your duas are going to be answered because of the fact that you are making it there, and you have some belief that the one who is inside of the grave can do something for you because you are standing there and you are praying, it is incorrect. Do not be of that camp either because there is nothing substantiated that Prophet والسلام, went to the graves of other Prophets and made dua there, and he made that a custom or ritual that Sahabas followed in making dua at his grave. In fact, this is something he said, do not do. More so because mainly this is what the Yahud and Nasara have done. Do not do like them. Do not make my place of rest to be a place of worship. Do not allow that to happen because then it will be as if I am being worshipped. And this is as he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So now we moved out of Sufia. The concept of Sufia, this boy is not able to hold the meaning of Sufia, therefore he cannot substantiate that all Sufis are innovators. 
We also moved out of the point of meditation because he did not know that meditation existed in Islam at all, which is a sad reality. But a lot of things that exist in Islam have been taken out and a lot of things that are in there today that they have supplemented uh, Islam with are not Islam because they've been added on. Um, so he moved out of meditation, then into the grave uh, site. He was not able to cope with the, the reality of, of the grave. Um, but there's also the point of one claiming to have Qur'an. I know the Qur'an says this, I know the Qur'an says that. Okay, but where in the Qur'an is it? I don't know. This is not correct, this is not right. Because there's also one of the elders, you know, an uncle of the boys. And he says, fight with the Qur'an. Just go to the Qur'an and use it. But I have to make very clear, unfortunately, this is, as, it, as in itself, is an impossibility. You cannot just say that, I know the Qur'an says something, go there and you will find it. You cannot say that, the Qur'an, I know the Qur'an says something, but you cannot cite where it is. This is not even correct. This is the problem, because... There's more to just being able to cite where it says. It's really the concept of living upon the Qur'an itself. There is that concept. Not just understanding and quoting, but doing what it is that it specifies to do in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of Muslimin have not taken the time to cite the Qur'an well enough, they followed many, many, many other different bits and pieces of information and narration. They do not know for sure the Qur'an. But anyway, moving on from that. Then this young man uh, asks also, okay, here's a hadith with a sound narration that the Prophet ﷺ forbid uh, oh, uh, women frequenting the grave. Okay, because the question first was, now that we're on the grave topic, um, can women visit the grave? Okay, someone is not being buried there, or a burial is not taking place at that time for that person to be placed into the grave. The woman is not allowed to stand around and watch that. So this is not allowed. But as far as once they are inside of the grave, yes women can go and do exactly what it is that Prophet ﷺ had encouraged to be done there. And what was just mentioned, absolutely. So, we're going to Sheikh Google. So, the boy gets on Sheikh Google and he says that majority of scholars in the, uh, obviously, unfortunate uh, means of uh, Wahhabi sect, uh, he would say, or I would assert, say that it is makruh, makruh, for the women to visit the grave. And they're basing it on a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, to the meaning that, you know, women who frequent the graves are cursed. Okay. So, uh, first thing um, is that a woman to visit the grave, uh, they saying that it is Makro, makro. In case you do not know the meaning, it's disliked. It's disliked. Can you believe it? Like the majority of your scholars, quote unquote, you claim they say it is makro. Makro is not haram. It's two different things, makro and haram. So we have to clarify that makro is disliked. But how do they reach the conclusion of dislike instead of saying that it is haram, forbidden? You will have to look into that. But as far as the hadith that you're quoting, again, because of the fact that you're not a muhaddith, I will tell you by your life, by the one who put uh, your, your soul into you, you do not know the reason behind this hadith. And he tries to Google it. I say, do not even waste your time. You will not be able to find the circumstances surrounding this hadith that you just quoted. Because 
we already know, which has, you know, it's recently been clarified and cited also, that the today's hadith books, majority of the ahadith are incomplete. We also know that a number of them are weak hadith and a number of them are false hadith. We also know that uh, Bukhari, Muslim, Ahmed, even Abu Dawood, they did not just compile hadith. We know that was not their thing. But who compiled this ahadith? Who took it out of their writing? And what was their writing really about? Their writing was really about the worship of Allah pertaining to the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The worship of Allah. How do we gain closer to Allah? By the means of Rasul. So they would write, they would research, and they would come to clear chains of these stories. Like all of these stories that are mentioned uh, in the sealed nectar, all of these are from the the, the, the compilations or the writings of these uh, Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawud, and so on. So we have to understand that. And therefore, this, since they took out the stories, they took out the actual essence that gave the meaning or gave the clarity on why the hadith was even stated. So they, therefore, that you, 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 you may be stating even an accurate hadith but because of the fact that you really do not understand the meaning of the hadith, you do not really understand the circumstances of the hadith, you're quoting it in a wrong circumstantial uh, concept. And then what reason makes it worse is you can't substantiate it with the Qur'an because the Qur'an does not substantiate falsehood. So you have a bigger problem there. But getting back to the concept of knowing the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, understanding the purpose of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being willing to submit to Allah jalla jalaluhu alone, being children of the akhirah and not of this dunya, loving the akhirah more of this than this dunya, all are qualities that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself had and encouraged us, the companions, and those who are there to uh, adhere to the same way. And the only way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Islam. Adding things onto it is unacceptable. Taking things from it is equally unacceptable. Adhere to the Qur'an and the entire Qur'an. And so the elder says, and the sunnah. Okay, let's, let's take a step back. What sunnah are you going to bring? What have you done to, to the sunnah? What understanding now do you have of the sunnah? Is it you just saying sunnah? I mean, do you really know the the mission of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? I mean, the you know, in a simple form, what was his mission? In three sentences, what was the mission of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? In three sentences, what is the purpose of al Islam? In three sentences, what is Al-Islam's plan? What is the plan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for Al-Islam? In three sentences. So the point is that Islam is simple. The point is that Allah ta'ala made the message clear. The point is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa fulfilled his mission. The point is that uh, people came later on just as the Yahud in Nasara and uh, diluted the, the the educational platform of Muslimin today. No one can deny this fact. But again, the extent of the dilution is still being assessed, as well as the impact of the uh, the delusion. Uh, very, very, very serious. We're taking it extremely high priority. Number one, um, and then within that. Um, there are a number of small entities that are Iblisi entities, and they are feeding off of the misinformation and misleading big time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that as well. Uh, you know, there are those who simply reject, and then there are those who do things to encourage rejection to continue and are added and added. So you have different levels. Therefore, all Muslim citizens, be mindful that we are only warners and we are only bearers of glad tidings. We are the army of peace. We're not the army of war. And we are here on this Quranic revolution upcoming 2023 
year of CE to state and to say that definitely we are thankful to Allah Jalla Jalaluhu for giving us the declaration of the Quranic revolution in 2021, the understanding in all the processes in everything, the necessary documentation that needed to be done in order to clarify and substantiate that. Uh, the the secret probes uh, that had to take place uh, after the general probes, that is, everything that had to do with clarifying to the the masses of Muslimin what reality uh, of the matter is. Uh, we're also thankful to the Joint Special Allied Super Coalition Forces and their efforts uh, from the uh, spiritual front lines to the religious social front lines. This mission has been a daring mission. It has been various campaigns, it has been various marches, but Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah Ta'ala has granted us victory after victory and triumphant after triumphant, despite the fact that we have uh, felt the setbacks as well we feel the triumph even more so and love Jalla Jalaluhu more than anything and anyone and look forward to the greatest reward in the Akhirah just as stated in the series of, in the series of Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu not a single one of us desires this world more than the Akhirah instead we desire the Akhirah more than this world. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables you to become victorious over us, then that is dearer to us because that means that he wants for us to have our Akhirah. This is what we have from the Brothers, Brothers Incorporated Brothers and the Brothers Intelligence Incorporated Brothers uh, spokesperson وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام الله على كل من اتبع الهدى